to another episode of Yeah, No, I Know. But before we get started, a little disclaimer. Nothing in this podcast is being claimed as fact. Most everything discussed here are our own individual, personal opinions, beliefs, and experiences. We encourage you to always do your own research and form your own opinions. Nothing one person says on this podcast goes for everyone here. Each individual speaking is speaking only for themselves and no one else on the podcast. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Yeah, No, I Know. You can see we're in a new filming space. Whoop, whoop. We are Jenna's Casa. She set all of this up, her and Ken. We're in her garage. <laughs> it's awesome. I wish my filming space was this big. It's a babe cave. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Right? You did such a killer job decorating it, too. We're actually going to have a neon sign that has our podcast name on it behind us, too, coming up. So yes. That'll be pretty cool. So just ignore that for right now. And if you're just listening, then we are also on YouTube if you prefer a more visual version of a podcast. And we're basically on every platform you can get your podcasts from. Is that the orange juice bottle? Is Making it? noise? <laughs> I think so. We're having mimosas and the orange juice bottle is like flexing. <laughs> our, our podcast gets a lot better when we've had a few mimosas. So. Doesn't everything? Everything gets better when you've had a few mimosas. <laughs> Ask us all the questions. Like my yes. son's naps, they get much better after mama has a mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a mom mimosa. There's no alcohol. Okay, yeah. yeah. I have very little in here because I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> we can finally talk about it on here. We're like, okay, what episode can we actually talk about it? Uh-huh. So, yeah, I basically Cheers. have a drop Yay. of um, <laughs> champagne in here. There's like this much champagne. So. so, I love it. We're all over the place. We just got a little bit of champagne in yours, none in yours because you don't really drink. And I'm a breastfeeding mama who's having a mimosa because baby's at home. <laughs> yes. I know. I just don't like the taste of alcohol. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Honestly, like not drinking has been really nice mm-hmm. while I've been pregnant. Um, I don't have hangovers. Yeah. I don't spend a lot of money on alcohol. I don't drink the calories. Like I feel good all the time for the most part. Like it's been nice. Right? I get hangovers from eating shitty food. See, I don't oh. at all. I have a stomach of steel. I could eat oh Jack gosh. in the Box for like seven days straight and be like, let's go work out. Yeah, no. I love me some Albertos, but like in the morning, Albert- my <laughs> gut is in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> that's a quote <laughs> yeah I, came up with it. I like it nice. I like it Hashtag that. yeah I'm I'm happy after nine months of you know sobriety yeah. <laughs> against my will no I, right. I would drink like a little bit here and there you know they say it's fine you know yeah so I would drink a little bit here and there but it was really weird like drinking alcohol afterwards you're like oh I can drink this but with breastfeeding you still have to be cautious and you know so that's well, nice to enjoy mimosa that was my drink of choice always. That or like red wine. Ooh, I miss red wine. Red wine. I haven't had red wine in so long. Okay. And wait. So you did do an, uh, a video about your pregnancy, right? I did an announcement video. Yes. Okay. Um, so we should probably direct people there if they want to know more. Because yeah. we'd love to ask you all the questions here. But I'm sure you already covered it. So well, else. there will be more to come. I'm going to do an upcoming video. So I did already post my pregnancy announcement, and it kind of had a little bit of a twist, as you guys know the twist. Yep. Um, so it's definitely not just your ordinary pregnancy announcement video. So if you're interested in seeing that, it'll be linked in the description box below. And then also I have a video kind of uh, going more into detail about what happened and, like, my story on that. So... That will also be, that'll be coming out when you guys are listening to this. It'll be out um, a day later on, or yeah, a couple days later on Thursday. So you guys can check it out um, this coming Thursday. That will be coming up. And when are we announcing the gender? Or when are you announcing the gender? I don't know yet. Okay. Well, so we've had an idea. We want to dye Kristen's hair and not show her, and then we'll reveal, and her <laughs> hair will either be blue or pink. So I love that idea. I think it'll be super fun. We'll go back to the salon for that one, dye her hair, and like surprise everyone. Yeah, I love that idea. That's a great idea. I think it's so. very Kristen. Yeah, and I haven't had colored hair in so long. Yeah. So it'll be fun, whether yeah. it's pink or blue. There you go. I love it. Or purple or green. <laughs> Well, you know, we're going to okay. do the traditional gender reveal colors, I think, okay. so it's easy for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> More purple and pink or blue and green? Sure. Yeah. 
I mean, so. Kristen can pull off like the rainbow on her hair. I love that, that steel blue on you, though. Oh, I miss the that blue. That was gorgeous. So, are you team boy then, Jenna? I'm always team girl. Yeah. Always. <laughs> you thought, Jenna thought I was team girl. But he is sassy. He so, is. I was right on that. Because he's a Leo. Yes. <laughs> I need to stop doing that. Sorry. She's tapping on her glass. I was yeah. just about to say something like, hey, don't tap on that. Yeah. <laughs> I ca- I'm catching myself. I'm getting better at this. Okay. We appreciate that you guys are um, very forgiving for <laughs> our, you know, newness to all of this and my baby crying in the background on one episode, um, people dealing with porter potties in another episode. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So the hopefully swan. this environment is more conducive to a podcast and we can get our shit together. Yeah, we're getting it down. We're getting it down. Um, so let's but, get into the episode today. Yeah, so enough uh, chit-chat on random things that aren't about what we're going to talk about today. So we asked you guys, well, I asked you guys in my Instagram story what questions you had about relationships. And there was so many good questions in there, and I wish we could talk about all of them today. So what I think we're going to do is keep, like, a folder and talk about like, I almost want to make this, like, a staple each mm-hmm. month where we answer your guys' questions about whether it's about girlfriend relationships, you know, uh, romantic relationships, entre- entrepreneurship, um, just different things like that. Mm-hmm. And because you guys had so many questions that I would love to answer all of them. And I get a lot of questions in my DMs about just different things in li- just life questions. And I think it'd be really cool if we could kind of make it a staple. So yeah, if you definitely. guys... Yeah, if you guys like that idea, then thumbs this up if you're on YouTube and comment below and let us know that you would like to see that because I think that would be really great. So I thought what we could kind of do is like talk about like quickly each of our, you know, relationship experience and kind of where we're at now Mm -hmm. and then kind of go into some of the questions that you guys have. And um, since I'm already talking, I guess I'll kick it off. (laughs) I moved out when I was 16 or 17 and I got into kind of an abusive relationship with an alcoholic um, and that was like physically abusive, mentally abusive, emotionally abusive Um, and I actually did an entire YouTube video about that relationship and it was like I was so raw and vulnerable in that video. I will link that for you guys as well if you're interested in seeing that. Um, I know you said you watched it so it's kind of heart-wrenching. Relatable, Relatable, yeah. uh, Hopefully not to too many people. Gosh, that sucks. Oh, um, there's a lot. Unfortunately, it's yeah. probably very relatable. Yeah, that sucks. That's, that's not what I want to hear. Being, but, I mean, being in the beauty industry, like, we get people in our chairs, and I swear, it's like 8 out of 10. Ugh, it's insane. That breaks yeah. my heart. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, well, more relatable than I'd like it to be. But, um, and then I went through a couple different relationships and kind of like was finding myself in my 20s, reading a lot of self-help books, trying to, you know, I had started my own business. I got my first business loan when I was 18 and just kind of doing that whole thing and realizing that like I was kind of messed up for my childhood a little bit, like not as much as some people, but really trying to just find myself. And that now, uh, fast forward to now, um, I got divorced like a little over two years ago because that was pretty not great relationship for me and um and now I'm in a super happy relationship with Nick and we're so in love and I get treated like a freaking queen and I've really like found myself and who I am and what I want to be and I'm not perfect by any means I have so much to do still but that's kind of where I'm at with my journey popcorn Jenna oh man where do I even go um so uh let's see I had a baby at 19, so I got pregnant at 19. Um, I was not with that guy. We broke up after, but I did get married again, or I got married at 22, and that was um, not a good relationship at all. Um, he was very, very abusive. He was a meth addict um, on top of an alcoholic and so many other things. I don't even know, honestly, but... Um, he cheated constantly and yeah it was a very dark but also very twisted and exciting time of my life if you've been in an abusive relationship then you know how confusing that can be uh so we were in a band together and there was a lot of really fun things going on and there was a lot of really 
uh, twisted things going on. And so I think a big part of me like was very in love with him and obsessed and very toxic relationship. But also um, I thought my life would be over if I left him. So I stayed with him for far too long. And um, I don't know. Have you guys seen Made? Have you watched the no, season? Uh, I have not, but apparently I'm late to the party because yes, many people same. have. It's yes. <laughs> really good. And I'm, I've heard a lot of people saying like, you know, like trigger and um, relatable and all those kinds of things. So me and my husband now started watching it and it's pretty crazy. A lot of the things that um, I can relate to. And one thing in particular was the night that this lady left her um, abusive relationship. She was picking glass out of her daughter's hair and the night that I left my ex was I was picking glass out of her forehead. So um, that was the point when I was able to leave him. So, um, yeah, obviously that was the turning point when it affects your kids to that degree. Um, fast forward, I did leave and my life has been nothing but amazing since I left. So if you are in that kind of relationship, I know it's scary, but the other side of it is so beautiful. Um, Mm -hmm. You just have to get through it. Um, So, yeah, when they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, it's (laughs) so, so true. Yeah. Um, Four years later, I married my husband, now Ken, who in so many ways saved me. Um, Now I'm just trying to learn how to be in a healthy relationship, and that's a whole nother battle, but it's a – great battle to be in now so that's kind of my story my little cliff notes so yeah Yeah. um and real quick I did want to say if you guys wanted to hear kind of more in depth about us talk about those relationships and kind of how I mean some of it will come out today when we're answering some questions I think but like if you guys want to hear more about those then I'm totally willing to like tell you everything so just let us know what you you want how about you Brooklyn oh I'm trying to think where to start um I I feel like I want us to do a whole episode on like what's called like hashtag daddy issues because yeah. <laughs> like you said, there's so many women can relate to your story and I'm sure yours as well, Jenna. And mine is like typical daddy issues kind of thing. So, um, and I know it's not what, really what we're talking about today, but a lot of my relationships and the way that they were defined was because of my relationship with my dad, um, who... Mm-hmm. Man, why do I always get emotional on this podcast? Because <laughs> you talk about your it's dad. Hard. Yeah. yeah. You know, all three of us are open books. All three of us are just, we're here to pour our hearts out and just be honest with you guys. So, hope you appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, so my dad, he's, if you haven't listened, um, he passed away three years ago. And um, my parents divorced when I was super young. I wasn't even one years old when they divorced. And um, so, I, my entire life, never knew my mom and dad being married. I never knew them together. I just, it was funny because I realized in high school, I dated a guy and his parents weren't divorced. And I was like, that's so weird. Like your parents aren't divorced. Like aren't all parents divorced? And it dawned on me then like, oh wait, that's not the norm. At least it shouldn't be. Like the norm should be mom and dad are still together. And to me, that was something I never knew. Yeah, Um, yeah, so my mom uh, got remarried when I was younger and um not that that's really part of the story, but I I love my stepdad, but we're just not, like, super-duper close. We don't have, like, that kind of father-daughter relationship. I didn't get it with my dad. I didn't really get it with him. And so um, I I always, like, crave that male attention, you know. Same. Relatable. Like, yeah. So many women do. You know, they have that issue. And that's why you hang on to it, even if it's not good for you, because mm-hmm. you're afraid someone's going to leave you because you were left by one of or both of your parents when you were little. Right. Abandonment issues. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's something there. You have to ask a psychologist. Well, or... I, I think I just was always trained unconditional love. Mm. And my mom is a rescuer. My mom is a doer. My mom is a helper. My mom will, like, seek people out and, like, figure out how to help them. So I think I did that with my ex. Yeah. And no matter what he did, you love him. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you know, like you, Jenna, you had someone who abused drugs in your relationship and alcohol, right? Yeah. Drugs, alcohol, and me. <laughs> and you. Yeah. No, not funny, but yes. I know. Yeah. That's how I deal with it. I just laugh it off. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't like to be weak. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're so, femininity. 
Vulnerability. I know it works. We're good. Vulnerability. <laughs> yeah. Working so, on it. <laughs> yeah. So my dad, he um he was an alcoholic. He was a functioning alcoholic, but he was an alcoholic. And so um so I feel like that was kind of how I grew up. I lived with my mom, but that was the relationship I had with my dad. Unfortunately, not the best one. Um, but so growing up, I feel like um, when I was in high school, I had like my first love. You know, I dated the quarterback and um, he broke my heart senior year. He, you know, the second week he broke up with me and his parking spot was still like, you know, you get senior parking spots. His was right next to mine. And oh. he broke up with me after we got the parking spots. And it's like, you're not going to not go park there because then he wins. But then every single morning, I had to park next to my ex-boyfriend our senior year. It was the worst Ugh. thing. It was the worst. And he would bring, like, these skanky little girls to his car. But <laughs> Oh, that'd be awful to deal with. <laughs> I know. So I just bring that up because I feel like the first time you experience heartbreak, like when you truly love someone, you experience it. It helps you grow. Like people say live and learn. I say love and learn. Like because you learn so much about yourself, what you want, what you don't want. Yeah. Um, but basically I just went through a long journey of like I dated a lot of guys. Um, I wasn't like a sleuzy out there, you know, but like I And if you were, it's okay too. Right, exactly. No <laughs> judgment. Do what you want to do with your body, girl. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, I dated a lot of guys and I just was in a lot of like stupid relationships because I just wanted I wanted that affection, I wanted that attention Tendency. from guys. Exactly. Until until I met this girl um, who is a therapist and, well, I won't say her name, but she um, focuses on love addiction. And when I learned about love addiction, um, she takes her practices from this woman called Pia Melody. If you want to look it up, love addiction is a real thing. There's love addicts and love avoidance. And once I realized that I was a love addict and I read this book called Facing Love Addiction, I can tell you right now that I am in a healthy relationship and marriage because I read that book hmm. and hmm. shifted my mindset and everything to the to read list. Yes, so facing love addiction by Pia Melody. Interesting. I was actually listening to a murder podcast on the way over here, <laughs> as you do. Um, I'm about to spit out my mimosa because I'm sorry. like from relationships to murder. Well. It's just where I heard it, but it was talking about, I'm trying to remember the verbiage, but it was essentially about your parents breaking your trust when you're little, getting mm -hmm. divorced. And so when you find a man who's, you don't want to abandon you because you think that everyone's going to, um, you're obsessed with like their love and affection and you're afraid that they're going to leave you and you are distrusting of them all at the same time even though you want to keep them around and stuff. And I was like, wow, like, that's so relatable. Like, I've grown a lot from, like, feeling those intense feelings of what I just said. But, like, I definitely was that person. Like, I, when I found a man who I loved that gave me attention, I would almost sabotage it by acting like a crazy person because I didn't want it to go anywhere. And I was afraid of being, like, I wanted that attention from a man because I never got it from my dad. So, interesting. Or you start acting crazy almost to, like, push them away. Just to prove that they're going to leave you. Yep, exactly. And like, see if they're going to. There's this funny story that my best friend loves talking about. Because when Andy, my now husband, and I were dating, um, we were out all having fun. And I seriously think it was the dumbest thing. I think he, like, I said some girl was cute. And he, like, agreed with me. I think that's <laughs> what it was. I don't remember. I was probably drinking. But no, I know I was drinking. <laughs> A little too much. Anyway, so we got in this huge fight over something so dumb, and it was totally my fault. And I go back to my apartment, and his he was going to stay the night, and I took his stuff, and I put it on the porch. Like, you are not staying here. And, all. and my best friend was there, and she's like, no, Brookie, like, you're overreacting, and brings his stuff and puts it back inside. And I'm like, no, that's it. I'm no, He's not staying here. Like, we're <laughs> done. And so I take his stuff, and I throw it back out. And she's like, no, 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 Brookie. And so it was this back and forth thing. And of course, when I woke up and was sober and we talked about it and granted, most guys would have been like, you're crazy. I'm out. Bye. I'm out. But what he did was he faced my insecurities head on and helped me to feel more secure about those 
areas of insecurity, right? That's what my boyfriend does too. Exactly. And so that's why we're still together because even though I was psycho and my best friend loves to claim that she's the reason we're still together because I was like throwing his shit out. <laughs> she probably I, helped. I have a story similar to that, but the opposite happened. Um, I was with Ken and we were newly married and I was used to fighting a certain way, you know, like with Mike where you're like, okay, you're out of here, like, leave, you better not be here when I get back, and no, 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 like, that kind of thing, and Mm -hmm. I tried to pull that shit with Ken, and I think it it was because, like, he styled his hair a way that I didn't want him to, and we were going to my best friend at the time's wedding, and I was like, you cannot wear your hair like that, like, you look ridiculous, and I just, like, like, went right back into that, like, old, you know, fight, whatever, so I told him to leave, and when I came back, he was gone, and I was like, wait, where where are you? And he's like, I'm halfway to Washington. I'm like, excuse me? Like he straight (laughs) drove back to Washington, which is where I picked him up from. Like we were talking, whatever. And so, yeah, he was on his way back to Washington. He's like, you told me to leave. I left. I'm like, no, no, no. That's not how it works. (laughs) You tell them to leave, but they're not supposed to leave. Wait, I didn't really mean that. I didn't mean for you to leave. And he was like, no, like we're done. I'm like, oh my gosh. But I never did that again. Mm -hmm. He taught me that my words have meaning and that they have, uh, like, I need to be very, very careful with my words. And he continues to teach me that. But I, instead of like, like being like, oh no, it's okay. Like, I love you. I'm here. He was like, no, you don't treat me like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh damn, you're right. And it actually has made me a better person too because I'm so like purposeful with my words and how I talk to people and like what I say and do I really mean what I'm saying and don't just throw shit out there so again teaching me how to be in a healthy relationship yeah he's like the next time you tell me to leave I'm not coming back okay have you have you guys ever done the like I'm over this conversation you like walk away and you leave and then they don't chase after you oh you're like he will not you're like pissed because you're like, no, 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 I left. I walked away so that you could yeah. chase me because women, we like to be chased, yes. you know? <laughs> I'm not saying it's the healthiest thing, but no. if there's any male listeners, just go after her, please. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> just go, go See, chase and her I would out. say the opposite. Uh, I, I would there's say a time don't. and place for each of those responses. Yeah. Like, if it's truly from, like, an insecurity that they know about, um them doing that to me in a situation where I felt insecure would do more damage than good. I would be like, okay, because that actually happened in my marriage a lot. I would be insecure about a way that he acted that was inappropriate with another girl and I would say something and it was that typical narcissist behavior making me feel like it was all me. There was nothing he was doing wrong. I need to go get counseling when no, I told like a million people. I'm like, no, that's fucked up. Your husband should not be doing that to you in that situation. Um, and so that just made me even more suspicious and insecure. And so that, what Ken did wouldn't have worked. Well, I like, was totally in the wrong. Yeah. When you're in the wrong, yes, I, I was feel in the wrong. like, I mean, he, obviously. Yours was in the wrong. Yeah. I feel like it depends on where it's coming from and what it is, but you know. Well, and I think it's, it's hard to say who's in the wrong because at the end of the day, a relationship, I hate when they say it's 50, 50, like it's a hundred, a hundred. Right. And well, some days you have to give more than the other person. Too. Exactly. You right. know? And so in that moment, like what you needed and what you needed, Jenna, were you know, different. It was different mm-hmm. things. Yes. You know? I needed my ass kicked. Like I needed to be woken up. You probably needed a hug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did. Well, and I think too, I just think that as women, like we all have our insecurities yeah. And a lot of times it stems from our past, whether it's our parents, our dad, our ex relationships, divorces, whatever it is. And every guy is going to face a woman who has insecurities and every woman is going to face a guy who has insecurities. And if you can take each other's insecurities and face them head on and almost like take responsibility for them, like, you know what, I'm going to make sure that he never has to feel insecure in this area again. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's not my responsibility, but if I want him to be happy and feel secure in the relationship, then I can take that on. And that's what Andy did for me. And that's, and that is his responsibility as far as I'm concerned. Like, and half the battle I think is growing up and reading these books that we've talked about and like figuring out 
what your insecurity is and why you have it. Because I know exactly what they are and I know exactly where they come from. Yes. And, and, that's and I'm aware part. of it. Taking so, that initiative for yourself and not just yeah. expecting your partner to fix it and to always succumb well, to you. Like, and I tell him. I yeah. say, this is where it stems from. This is where it came from. I know it's not always rational, rational, but I need you to know that this is the way that I am. This is why I am the way that I am. And as much as I can work on it, I need you to help me. Yeah. And that. then when he can help you recognize that too, when you're in that mode and be like, okay, I understand that this is why you're acting like this. So it's, it's reading each other's language and body language. And we all speak different languages and you have to just learn each other's. Like, I know Ken will tell me, um, okay, I can see you're getting like, you're starting to bite a little bit, but I know this is because you're scared. Like, mm -hmm. I know that this is fear-based and it's not, you're not, he's like, your yeah. words used to be bullets. Now they're snowflakes. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, I get where they're coming from now. It's like a little Nerf gun now where before it was like, oh my God, like you're a bitch. <laughs> like, right. So yeah, I, I can see where softness comes into play as well too. Right. Compassion. Yeah. Well, should we answer a question? Yeah. It's a lot like to unload. It is. Like, and that's why I kind of feel like going into that is all maybe like a, a different episode. Yeah. Um, While you're looking at questions, I'll just say last, uh, not last night, it was a couple nights ago, but Andy and I, I I'm not going to sit here and claim we're not a couple like who were like, oh, we don't fight at all. Like every healthy relationship, in my opinion, should have some healthy arguments and fights. Um, we don't fight a ton, but when we do, like... I'm, I'm a very passionate person, so it can get heated. Taurus. Yeah, I'm a Taurus. <laughs> um, but we got She's into, a, like, a heated one the other night, and he walked away, and he was like, I just need to go to bed. Like, I just need to go to bed. So he goes to bed, and then he comes back out, and he's like, and I wasn't done talking. Like, I had more to say, you know? And so he comes back out, and he goes, okay, let me hear it. And I love what he did because he just <laughs> let me, like, unload on him, and he was like, okay, what else? Okay, what else? And I like kept going. And then he kept saying that until I was done. And then he's like, okay, let's talk about it. You said this, you said this. And it was like, I don't know. I just love the way that he handled that yeah. because I just, I needed to get all of this like off, like off of my chest, you know? And he just sat there and he listened. And then we talked about everything and it was good. We're like, okay, cool. Nice. So if that helps anyone. <laughs> yeah. That's and great. that's part of what we were talking about where sometimes you got to be 90% and the other person's 10. Like, yeah. You just got to know when to pick up the slack. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if someone's like, if Nick's having a day where he's like very stressed out and kind of being a little negative and short, mm -hmm. which is very often, very not often is what I meant to say. <laughs> that's usually me. Mm -hmm. That's like that. Um, I'll have to be extra positive and, you know, mm -hmm. fill in the gaps yeah. to help support him. Yeah. So that's right. a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So this question is, how do you move on from a relationship that meant a lot to you? I think we've all had those, so we can mm -hmm. all kind of touch on those. And um, what's always helped me move on from a relationship that meant a lot to me is recognizing the toxic things about it and the reasons why we're not together anymore um, and realizing that I needed to work on myself and really looking at, okay, why didn't this work? And being able to move on, like, okay, well, we didn't want the same things, or he was abusive, or, you know, he didn't respect me, he wasn't close with family, and that's really important to me. Like, those are, there's some, like, you have to figure out, I feel like, your core belief system, your morals, and what matters to you in, like, a relationship, and, like, figure out what that is, and, like, what you're willing to put up with, and what you're not willing to put up with, and as you get older, and you go through relationships, it's so much easier to figure out those things right off the bat, um, but those always helped me move through. I would, I didn't social media stalk. I would never look at anything of theirs ever again. I would unfollow them on everything. Um, and I would just remind myself of the things that frustrated me about the relationship. And I would remind myself about them. Like I literally wrote a list when I got divorced. I was like, I hated this. I hated this. He ignored me this time. Cause I made notes for our counselor when we go to counseling and I would keep them and I'd look at them and I'm like, that was the worst feeling like mm -hmm. that. Like I didn't, I got no support, you know? Um, not that it was all one-sided. Of course, if you were here, you'd probably say some things about me too. Um, I'm not perfect, but um, for me, that's what helps me move on and just focusing on my own self-care and doing things that I care about. But what do you guys have um, for, for tips on that one? I think people say time, right? But I think yeah. that it's, the time is just an accumulation of like not having that person in your life and being able to, 
you know, drive by the places that you guys used to drive by and visit the places that you used to go to. I know when I first left or yeah, left my ex-husband, I forced myself to go out by myself, to do things, to go to places that I went with him, like to just get those memories out and like have mm-hmm. the firsts and the seconds and the thirds without him just out of the way. And I did not want to go. I was heartbroken. I was crushed. But I think forcing myself to do those things and completely, like you said, no social media stalking, like, like just get it out. Like the, the longer that you hold on and the longer you search, the longer it's going to take for you to get over those moments. And it doesn't mean that like it's gone forever. It's just, it's not going to hurt so much. It's, it's kind of like when somebody passes too. like my, my old best, because I said relationship. So I'm assuming this could be a friendship or relationship, whatever. My old best friend passed away eight years ago. And every day on the day that he passed, I mean, it was, you know, hard. And this last year, the day came and went and I didn't even realize it. And I felt horrible. And my husband was like, you don't need to feel bad. Like you, you're moving on with your life. It doesn't mean that you've forgotten him, but you know, like I, I just think that you need to like, you know, just do the things that you need to do, visit the places, stop social media stalking, don't talk to them and start your new life. Yeah. And fill <clears throat> the voice in yourself with your own happiness and your own things. Mm-hmm. And lots of self-help books. Wanted, yeah. That you <laughs> wanted them to help fill. Exactly. Lots yeah. of self-help books. There's <laughs> some really good ones. I mean, yeah. it just obviously all depends on like the circumstances, right? Like yeah. why, why you broke up, what happened? Like yeah. there's a lot to it, but chances are, um, there's a reason. And one thing that I was always so comfortable with saying to myself after I broke up is everything that is meant to be will always be. Yes. So if I'm meant to be with this person, I'm just going to let it run its course and do what it's going to do. Because if I'm meant to be with that person, I will be with them and the universe will bring us back together. Yeah. And if I'm not great, I'm going to focus on myself right now. And you know, you just have to, yeah, self-help books, honestly. Yeah. What's and, that saying? Yeah. Like, if you love them, let it, let them go. Mm-hmm. And if they don't come back to you, they were never yours to begin with or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, think once you it. accept, like, your situation, like, I just find, like, getting to a place in my life with friends and um, colleagues and things, people coming in and out of your life. And I'm just like, okay, God, you want them in my life? They're there. If you don't, then they're gone. Like, I'm just completely trusting of the journey that I'm on. If you're religious, then, you know, that's the thing. But I just... That, that's my biggest thing too, is just being like, I'm, I am accepting of what is being put in and taken out of my life at this point. Mm-hmm. And if you're religious, it's okay to just pray and be like, help me through this. Like yeah. help remind me of the reasons why we broke up, help mm-hmm. take this pain away from me, help, mm-hmm. you know, help me get through this. Like, yeah. and you will be surprised at what happens. Yeah. I was going to say what you were talking about, the list, like how you like wrote things down. Yeah. Um, a mentor of mine told me to do that when I was single. So if you're single, this really helped me have a list of like the must haves and then like the must not. So for me and get specific, like get very specific. I remember writing things down, like, you know, family is really important and I want him to be a family person, but not just his family, like both of our families and in like incorporating both of our families together or a guy who, um, makes sure that I know that I'm his priority at all times over like his friends or anyone else. And I got specific on things like that. And I look back and like, I look at my husband now and I'm like, Oh wow, you really are these list of like my must haves, but there's also, that too. yeah, there's also the must nots. Like my dad had a drinking problem. So I didn't want anyone who had any sort of addiction or drinking problem, you know? And, um, I think that really helps you, like you said, like to look at those and be like, you know what? This guy was like eight out of 10 on these things, but he didn't have this or this, or, you know, you know, he had this on my like red flag, like the must nots. And I think looking at that, I mean like, okay, it's, it's okay to look back and have good thoughts and feelings about a relationship and be like, you know what though, there's something better for me. Like, it's okay. Like we had a great time. Like, I don't feel like you have to like, Oh, I hate my ex or blah, blah, blah. For sure. I don't have those feelings. I'm like, you know what? I learned, I grew from it. I know what I want. I know what I don't want. And at the end of the day, if I poured my heart out, if I let my walls down and he didn't want me, then that's okay. That means that someone does. And I remember Mm -hmm. writing, like, I want someone who just wants me And when Andy, it's kind of a funny story. He saw me on social media. He like saw a picture of me and he'll tell you, he saw this picture of me on Instagram and he was like, 
I need to know her. Like, who is that? I need to know her. And to me, that was like, I don't know, people talk about like, you write stuff down, you kind of like manifest it or whatever. I'm like, I wrote that down. Like, he wanted me, you know? And so, it, and I was just talking to somebody about this earlier. Like, I've never felt more wanted by a man in my life than with Nick. Yeah. And like, having daddy issues, that's like big. And you're going to find someone that wants you and they're going to make it fucking obvious. Mm-hmm. They're going to fight for you. So I have to pee really bad. Yeah. So pause. pause. <laughs> also, I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, I was going to say my mom always taught me and told me that you don't want the guy that you're obsessed with. You want the guy that's obsessed with you. And that's yeah. how I knew with Andy that like he was the one. And I don't know. There's something about like with women, like your love will grow. Like it will get there. Like, I don't want to sit yes. here and say that like, oh, my husband loves me more than I love him. Absolutely not. Like it is very equal. We but in the beginning, right? but in the beginning, he pursued me in a way that I'd never been pursued before. And I kid you not this, the second night I met him, not the first night, um, the second night I met him, I said to my sister, like, he's not really my type. So Dude, we, I said the same thing about Nick. I never thought I was going to see him again. Ladies, you, you never, you, <laughs> there you go. We are three examples. You never marry your type. So whatever your type is, go for like the far opposite. I should show a picture of my ex-husband and a picture of my current husband. <laughs> <laughs> all my ex-boyfriends like pretty much looked the same. Like they were all oh, yeah. like dark hair, dark eyes. Like My ex had more tattoos six, than you. Really? Wow. Like, literally covered from... No, he had facial tattoos all the way down to his feet. Oh, wow. Like, I actually think Andy's the first guy I've ever dated with tattoos. I don't think I dated him with tattoos. Nick is the first guy that I've dated without tattoos. Ken has no tattoos. That's so funny. (laughs) So funny. Yeah, I... I, It's funny because, yeah, Nick pursued me a ton. Yeah. And, like, I didn't even know if I was ever going to see him again after the first date. I was like, well... Thanks for the dick. Like, that was nice. And, like, <laughs> never thought I was going to see him again. And then, like... We'll have to hear kept, that story. Yeah. Kept, sh- kept like, showing up at my house and, like, calling me and wanting to go do things. And I was like, okay. And I wait, even wait, him one time for three days. Was it kind of stalkerish? No. Okay. No. Showing up at your house? That's not stalkerish? Well, like, okay. So, I knew he was coming over. But he appeared in my bedroom. Like, I was yelling at my dog because Leo did something bad. I'm like, no. And I'm like, and then he's standing in my bedroom. Was he naked? He was <laughs> He was fully clothed. And I'm like, did oh. you just let yourself in my unlocked house? Like, and now you're on the second floor in my bedroom? Like, yeah. what the fuck? The <laughs> reason I ask is because Andy literally stalked me on social media. And we kind of have this joke. Like, we kind of have this joke about, like, like, don't, don't dismiss the stalkers. Like, they oh might gosh. be the one, you know? I mean, Nick shows up in her bedroom. Andy stalked me. I don't know. We were out. I was out at a bar, and I was on a date with another guy, and I was walking in. I Yeah, I was um, walking into this bar, as apparently he was walking out. Like, it should, like, seriously be a movie. And Andy <laughs> saw me and recognized me from my Instagram. Granted, I have no idea who he is at this point, Okay. He got back in line, paid the cover charge again to get in, walks up right in between me and this guy who's like 6'3", and he goes, are you Brooklyn? And I'm like, who are you? Like, did I kiss you or like, was I drunk? Like, did I meet you on Tinder? I have no idea who you are. Oh my God. And he's like, he starts to explain like, oh, I know your friend. We work together, blah, blah, blah. I saw, I follow you on Instagram. I'm like, and my words out of my mouth was like, oh, so you're a stalker. And he's like, oh, oh, I don't know. Like. And then um, he even, like, messaged me on Facebook that night. I never responded because I just thought he was a weirdo. And then our friend that we had in common invited me to their company Christmas party. And I said, like, oh, is my stalker going to be there? And so I show up and Andy's there. And then we started, like, talking. And there's, like, more to the story. But basically, I mean, I is it stalking or is it, like, they just know what they want? I don't know. Yeah, Ken told me a when rough. we started talking that we were going to be married that summer. There you go. And this was, like, March. I'm like, uh, no, not going to happen. And we did. Yeah, he pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. And That's so funny. Yeah. I I was specifically putting vibes down. Like, I'm moving. So I met Nick um, a week before I moved to Nashville. So I literally just got back on Bumble because I was just looking for a good time. I was with the same dick for, like, seven years. And I mean that um, – figuratively and physically. Um, (laughs) um, So I, we met 
we hooked up on the first date and I was like, and he like invited me to spend the night. I was like, no, 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 I'm going home. I have a dog. That's my excuse. <laughs> so like, then he like texted me a couple days later cause we set up a time that we were going to go to Universal Studios cause he just wanted to hang out. He was like trying to like get in as much time with me as he could. And knowing his schedule now, I'm like, that's not, that wasn't easy. Like he, yeah. like every open day he was like, Hey, you want to get together? You want to go to a baseball game? You want to do this? So we were going to go to Universal Studios and I was at another guy's house. And so I just didn't respond to him for like two days. And then he texted again. He's like, Hey, so, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, who double texts? Like who double texts <laughs> on top of the other texts? Like, and the funny part is Nick is not that guy. Like he was never like that with girls. He told me he was very much so like the cool guy that yeah. like kind of was a dick to girls and like whatever. And I even asked him, I said, why did, why didn't you treat me like that? And he's like, I knew you wouldn't put up with it. And I was like, okay. So you needed a girl that kicked your ass a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was pretty funny. But then at my friend's house, um, this is probably so rude, but I was just trying to like, let it be known without having to have a serious conversation that I'm leaving in a week. Like this isn't going anywhere. I don't think like, this is cool. We're getting to know each other, whatever, but you're not really my type. Like I, whatever. So I made sure that he overheard that I had slept with someone like a week ago just because I wanted him to know that like I wasn't his and like I wasn't, you know, I was just kind of playing the field a little bit. And he sat in the car and he was so quiet and he, I was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, oh gosh, what are we going to talk about feelings right now? And usually I want to, but I wasn't planning on dating this guy. So I wasn't really trying to put in much effort, you know, and, and they fucking loved that shit. They loved yeah. that shit. Tell so, them, tell them no. Yeah, you want him crawling around to act like you're not interested, yep. but I really just kind of wasn't, whatever. I mean, interested to an extent, obviously he was there. And he's like, it really, like, it really bothered me to hear you talking about, like, being with another person. He's like, usually I'm on the receiving end of this conversation, but, so it's kind of awkward for me, but, like, I really like you, and I've, like, deleted Bumble, and I was just like, oh, geez, here we go. Like, I'm moving to Nashville in a week. This guy is, like, real into me and I was into him too but like not to the extent that he was yeah. and now I'm like obsessed with him so you know what's so funny is that I so when I said I re-met Andy at the Christmas party the next morning at 7 a.m I had a flight to Nashville I was going by myself to Nashville for the first time I just oh always gosh. wanted to go and I had just gotten out of a relationship and so I was just like I'm gonna like go have fun like I just wanted to meet a cowboy and I did, and I had a good time. <laughs> um, nice. See, that's nice. Okay, pause for a second, ladies. Like, if you're single, go travel by yourself. It was, like, the best. Like, I'm talking by yourself where you don't know anyone. Be safe. But it was the best experience of my life, and I needed that. And I think God knew I needed that to, like, get it out of my system and go to Nashville and have a fun time. Well, when Andy and I met at that Christmas party, we talked about going on a snowboarding trip, like, in February with his friend who had a cabin. And I love snowboarding. So um, when I came back from Nashville, he, like, hit me up and was like, hey, do you want to go? And I'm like, I don't really know you, but free cabin? <laughs> like, hell yeah. Like, and I told my best friend, I said, he's cute. I'll probably drink wine and, like, make out with him in a jacuzzi. But that's it. Like, he ain't getting none. And I'm not going to talk to him again after this mammoth trip. I'm literally going to use him for the cabin. <laughs> well, before the snowboarding trip happened, like a couple of days before my mom got put in the hospital oh. and Andy was in uh, Encinitas and my mom was in Riverside. And if you don't know, that's like a two hour drive. Well, he drove from Encinitas to Riverside and surprised me, had no idea he was coming. I had like been on one date with him. So he surprised me there with my mom in the ICU and he like texts me, what are you doing? I'm like, I mean, I see you. My mom just got out of surgery. And he's like, um, I'm on the second floor. I'm like, that's something Nick would do. What? Straight up. Yeah. I was like, what? And so I've been telling my mom, like, I'm going on this snowboarding trip with this guy. Like, he's just a friend. I don't want a boyfriend. I just came back from Nashville. I'm like Aww. single lady, you know, and he surprised me and he met my mom in ICU. And I remember the next day, like after he left, um, oh, he brought like, he brought me like a backpack of like a sweatshirt and toothbrush and water because he knew I hated hospitals and he was an EMT at the time. And anyways, Aww. but so my mom was like, so are we still just friends, Brooklyn? And I was like, no, I guess Andy's not. Like <laughs> but even then when we went on the snowboarding trip, I had a date lined up for when I got home with this. As you do. <laughs> yeah. With this like Navy guy. And 
I remember on the snowboarding trip, Andy told me, he was like, I don't share. <laughs> and I was like, okay. He was like, either we're dating each other or we're not. Like, that's it. I don't share. And that's when I knew, like, even though I was like, oh, he's not my type. I wanted to be single. I was like, what my mom said was always in the back of my mind. Like, you want the guy that's obsessed with you. And I was like, this guy just drove two hours to come meet me at the hospital while my mom's there. Like, you want someone who's there for you. And that's so thoughtful. Exactly. And, like, he doesn't want to share me with any other guy. So I canceled the date with that guy. And and it's a little attractive when they put their foot down. It was so sexy. Yeah. That was, like, so sexy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we've been together ever since. So, yeah. I just thought the Nashville thing was really fun. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's something with Nashville. Girls go to Nashville if you need <laughs> People go to Nashville to hook up with other people. Just that's a known fact. Yeah. Like, that's... That's that's what it is. That's not why I went, but and when I say I met a you cowboy, you said you I went not. to go find a cowboy. Well, I didn't hook up with him. You did it? No, uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, why not? No, I um. <laughs> did you kiss him? Yeah. What is hooking up? Is that, I thought it was to me but... sexy time, like sex. Yeah. That's what I think. Hooking okay, up so is. that's hook up. Yeah. Make out. So you made out. Yeah. Okay. Andy, don't listen to this. <laughs> I will also do one and not the other. Like, if I choose to kiss you and the kiss is good, we're just doing the whole thing if I feel like it. I feel, and I usually Oh, I do. like the tease. Mm. It depends how, how I feel. Like, if I want to be in a relationship with you and I see it going somewhere, I don't give it up. Yeah. That's a longer, that's a way longer process. I... But if I just want to have fun. Yeah. During that time all. in my life, I was like, I don't want to be in a relationship. I just want to date and have fun. And for me, what I needed was like... I can date multiple guys and have fun. I made sure all of them knew that I was not exclusive with them. And I also said, like, it's not going anywhere, like, past kissing, basically. So if you want to date me and have fun and get to know each other, great. I mean, it was a fun time. Yeah. I would, like, go on two dates in a day. Oh, dang. That's awesome. Wow. Okay, I, I did it I, I can touch on, like, <laughs> a different side of that for the girls that are out there that are single that aren't dating just for the fun of it. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, when I broke up with my husband, I didn't date for four years. And I knew of Ken through a couple of my friends. My So Ken's best friend is one of my best friend's husband. So anyway, I had known of him for a very long time. And this kind of is like putting it out there too, is in the back of my mind, way, 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 way in the back of my mind, I kind of think I always, I don't want to say I had a crush, but like had this admiration for Ken. Like it was always like, if I were to date that's the kind of guy I would want to date so when I kind of said to Faith which I knew would get back to Greg which would get to Ken that I'm ready to start dating I kind of put it out there and then we all had like gone to a dinner and um, we both were there and that's when we kind of started talking but I will definitely say that I think I kind of put it out there and and was able to you know, we're women. Like, we can make shit happen if we want to. <laughs> and I feel like I, if I'm being completely honest, I probably made that happen the way that I wanted to by still acting like I didn't need it to happen. That's kind of, I mean, you don't need to play games, but you need to, like, still, everyone likes Yeah, and I was scared. I didn't want to, like, commit because this is my friend's friends and what if it didn't turn out good. But, yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't dating around. He was the first guy I dated and probably the last. <laughs> so, and that yeah. was in three months. So, yeah. you don't need to date a bunch of people either. You can do either or. So, I'm sure there's people that are in my situation. Exactly. Yeah, so, sure. if you're not dating, don't feel left out. I was there too. <laughs> yeah. Um, that same therapist, the one that taught me about love addiction, she had told me that men, she's like, it goes back to their nature, like cavemen, they were hunters and gatherers and they want to hunt and pursue something. And it's not about playing games, ladies. I don't, I don't agree with like playing games, but just don't be, I don't know. Easy. Yeah. Don't be so easy. And I don't mean like sexually. I just mean like. Yeah. In general. Yeah. There's a book called, two books. Um, I don't remember where the first one is, but, <laughs> well, it's along the same lines. So if you Google this, you'll find it. It's called Why Why Men Marry Bitches. Oh, I love that book. And that so book good. will teach you how to not play games, but also like put your foot down, set your boundaries, respect yourself, expectations. And that alone is like a chase to mm-hmm. a man. It's a mental like stimulus. Like mm-hmm. they like to, to figure something out. And, um, yeah, it's just kind of like, don't bend over backwards to respond to their text right away if you're busy. Like, 
let it ride for a second. Like, you don't have to jump to, you know? Yeah. Well, but if you want to, then reply back. Yeah. Because that's yeah. who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say that yeah. same yeah. therapist, no. she told me to have this rule of um, make plans, like, at least two to three days in advance. Don't, like, if they text you, like, what are you doing tonight? Yes. Nick tried to do that with me. And I was like, you want to go wakeboarding or whatever in an hour? No, I'm busy at the gym. Sorry. Okay. Well, so I tried to do that. But Andy had, like called me when I said we went on one date prior to the snowboarding trip this was it because he called me and I just got back from the gym and I'm like why is this guy calling me so I answer and like it's so much easier to like lie over a text message and if he would have text he was like what are you doing I'm like I just got home from the gym he's like have you eaten dinner I said no you want to go get dinner at that point what am I going to say I'm like uh, uh, uh." like so I was like I would have been like I have shit to do (laughs) I said I'm like okay yeah and then I called my best friend I was like shoot I think I should not go like I have, like, 30 minutes. I, like, need to shower. I can't get super cute. She's, like – and this is what she said to me. She's, like, maybe he just wants to be friends. Like, don't overthink it. This isn't a date. Like, just throw on some comfy clothes. Oh, it's a date. It's a date. Well, yeah. Come to find out it was. But so I, like, didn't even look that cute. Like, normally I'd get all done. And he probably thinks you look amazing. Mm -hmm. I I did not try at all and went out to dinner. I was thinking this isn't a date. He just wants to get to know me before we go snowboarding. No, I was wrong. And then it was the next day that my mom got put in the hospital, and that was, like, technically our first date, but I didn't know. So I will say, the whole make yourself not available, that was my intention, and I didn't, and it worked for me that I didn't you follow don't always, her advice. So. Yeah, you don't always have to do that. There's right. no, like, book on it, but, like... You know, don't he, be desperate. Don't be desperate. Yeah. Like Nick called me to, he would always call too. And I'm like, why are you calling me? Just text me, you freaking weirdo. <laughs> but he would call me and be like, hey, it was paddle boarding. And he was like, do you want to go paddle boarding? And I'm like, I don't know, it was like one or something. And I'm like, I'm at the gym right now. Like when? And he's like 2.30. I was like, no, I'm sorry. I've got a really long list of stuff to do. Like I need things planned in advance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just told him, I was like, that's my style. I'm not really like an off the, let's go right now. Like, cause I need to curl my hair and like get ready, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you can see when guys start to date you the effort they want to put in and how much it means to them. And when they're not putting in a lot of effort, you can tell that it doesn't mean a lot to them. So move yeah. on because yeah. you don't want a guy like that. Like Nick arrived at my house the day after I got there to Nashville to my new house and I took a shower and he had hung a picture that he got framed of us on my wall, the very first picture that was ever on my wall. Aww. And then he was unpacking my dishes and putting them away in my kitchen. And I was like, well, marry me. Yeah, I was like, okay, so when then? I'm actually still wondering when. So yeah, we're Nick, all wondering when. We're all <laughs> no pressure. If you Nick. need help, call us. <laughs> we'll help you. Right? Now that I'm now that I'm pregnant, though, I almost like want him to wait until later. Like I don't. I just feel like it's gonna feel like a shotgun kind of a thing, and I'm not interested. A shotgun proposal. Yeah, like, oh, I'm pregnant now. Let's get married. Let's do the whole thing. Like, I mean, the ring was coming. But if people know, yeah, if people know you, like, this, you guys are basically engaged just without the ring. Yeah, I mean, you like in my mind, it's not Kristen's boyfriend. It's her fiance. It's her husband. It's that's that's, calls me his wife. Like, yeah, like (laughs) I forget that he's your boyfriend. Yeah, Yeah. it's weird to say. Actually, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Um, Yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be weird. I guess, but I yeah, I don't know. weird part of me it was like I kind of don't want it to just be like oh like to look like oh just because I'm pregnant now you know we're getting married but yeah it was always in the works I mean we've been talking about marriage since it was six months into the relationship um by we I mean he brought it up actually so (laughs) yeah not surprised yeah he asked me if I wanted to get married at their family farm or in Mexico oh and which yeah what'd you say the family farm that's where his mom is buried oh beautiful yeah so someone asked, knowing when to move on from a relationship. Crickets. So many variables. It just, yeah, honestly, I feel like it comes down to how they treat you, like, and how you feel when you're around them and what they bring out in you. Um, because if you're not getting what you need out of a relationship, then I think you need to leave. But don't also confuse that with every relationship has an ebb and flow. And there are marriages where they yes. go through moments where you feel like you're second guessing whether this is the right person and stuff. And at that moment, I feel like you need to rediscover your marriage and your love mm-hmm. and not just think the grass is always greener on the other mm-hmm. side. Yeah. yeah. I think it's about knowing yourself, what you need and communicating that. If you communicate it and it still doesn't happen, then that's probably, then your needs aren't being met. And that's probably 
a time. And I, yeah. I'm assuming that we're talking about a relationship that isn't marriage because I personally would have different views if you're talking about marriage. Yeah. I would say one thing is just I know for myself, if I don't feel like I have given 150% and I have done everything that I possibly can do to make that relationship work, I can't leave. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where I'll leave that. I agree, except when it comes to, like, physical abuse and things like that. Like, yep. that, you, you're you ready to move on. Like, yes. you need to respect yourself and move on. But if it's a healthy, normal relationship yeah, like and a, you're just not sure if you should stay or not, I just, I can't live with regret. So, I yeah, never yeah, want to wonder. Totally. Can I ask you girls this question? Because um, I've never personally been in a relationship that was physically abusive. Where's the line there? Because to me, as someone who's not been in it, it's easy for me to say the second that there's physical abuse, I'm out. But when there has been, like, and, and I know some personal friends of mine that are struggling with where is that line? When do you leave? If sometimes there's kids involved, sometimes there's not. Like, where's that line? The line is the moment it gets physical for me. Like, that's, there's no exceptions. Like, you shouldn't be pushing or laying your hand on anyone or throwing things or in their face at all. Mm-hmm. And or emotionally, because chances are, if someone is already to the point where they're treating you that way, they have so much shit that they need to work on outside of your relationship that they can't do interdependently. Um, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is an awesome freaking book that talks about how you cannot be interdependent unless you're independent. And it kind of talks about like how like there's certain things that you need to work on yourself before you're in another relationship with someone because they can't fulfill those things for you. So I feel like... Um, That's why it took four years. Yeah. And sometimes you need that. I, so for me, when it comes to physical or emotional like abuse, like it's... Uh, I mean, it's... The line is drawn right at the, at the beginning. Like mm-hmm. if you step over that line and you don't go get help for it immediately, then it's over. Like there's, there's, there's patterns in you that you need fixed and you need to go get help. Um, because you don't just physically abuse people and you just showed up there one day and that's where you are. Like that's, you work up to that and you have a lot of issues, um, that you need to work on and and you just can't, you can't do that in a relationship usually. I think the, the, the pattern that the word that you said pattern is so important. So if there's any type of emotional, physical abuse that is cyclical, when you find yourself on these high highs and these low lows and, um, you're addicted to it. Um, I, I always say Mike was addicted. Mike was addicted to meth. I was addicted to Mike. Like it, it, when you can't physically function without that person or without that person's approval, there's a problem. So, and I know that they will use, um, cause I mean, it can be emotional abuse as well to where, you know, they don't let you have, they don't let you work like that movie made. Like you guys are watching it. We're talking about this. <laughs> but like the guy wouldn't let her work. He had full control over their money. Like she, she literally couldn't like, and I, and I get that, you know, so they make you feel like you can't live without them and that you're nothing. And you literally have no means to take care of yourself without them. And that's a total, like, that's a complete mind control as mm-hmm. well. And that can be just as, you know, um, abusive as well to where, you know, I, I've heard of women like killing themselves just to get out of it, you know? So there's, there's a very, I think whenever there's a pattern and you find yourself in this this just wave of cyclical mental physical abuse, that's when it's time to leave or get help and find somebody that is out of your circle who's a professional to give you advice. Do not talk to your friends. Do not talk to your family. Don't talk to the person. Find help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah. Um, what about like with infidelity? I'm kind of always <laughs> once a cheater, always a cheater, but that's just me. <laughs> that's pretty much my opinion on it as well. That was one of the first things I would ask people on a date. Like, yep. I wouldn't say on our first date necessarily, but I would want to know if they'd ever cheated on someone and what mm-hmm. the circumstances were. It's in and you or it's not. I feel like I could never. feel like people can grow. Like if it's in their yes. early twenties, why are you laughing? What do you say? <laughs> she probably cheated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh shit. Perfection. No, this is no. It's not as bad as it sounds. I was like a freshman in high school and I was like trying to break up with my boyfriend, but I didn't want to do it over the phone. It was Thanksgiving break and my best friend's cousin, who was really cute, was in town and I ended up like a little salute over here. (laughs) We ended up, we had a bet at a miniature golf, uh, a place called Mulligan's, like a miniature golf place. And if you got a hole in one, then you had to kiss the other person. 
and he got a home one and I had to kiss him, but I was technically still in a relationship. And I told Andy this and he told calls me a total oh, slut. Andy. <laughs> No, it wasn't Andy. No, no, no. Oh, you told Andy. I this. told Andy. Okay, like, I was like, whoa. Because you have to confess if you've ever cheated. Right. I'm like, I was a freshman in high school, and I technically, I was planning on breaking up with this boy, but I didn't, and I kissed high another boy. Doesn't count. I don't. Okay, think. thanks. Like, I still feel guilty about it. I feel like early twenties <laughs> and stuff. Like if you like when you were seriously having relationships and you were like okay with cheating on someone and like doing things behind their back, like that's. That's a character flaw. Different story. For yeah. sure. Yeah, no. But I mean, I dated a boy. I was dating him forever. And the father of my son, actually, I was hanging out in a group. And he kept pursuing me, pursuing me, and then, like, wanted to kiss me. And I was like, no, I have a boyfriend. I'm like, okay, I need to go break up with him. So I went and broke up with him. And then I kissed him the next day. Yeah. See, that's, yeah, yeah. that's respectable. But I've always wondered, why can't you just break up? Even yeah. if it's quickly through a text and then get on I with still feel what bad you want to do. <laughs> I wouldn't. I do. Yeah. I, he was a good guy. I clearly yeah. still feel bad about mine, too. I did the right yeah, thing, you, but I you look like you had something to get off your chest. <laughs> yeah, she's fashion. like, how do I bring this up? Um, but yeah, no, 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 I think no. if somebody, che- if you're in a marriage and that person cheated, I... Uh, There'd be no hard. more chances. That'd be it. It's it's very me. hard. I feel like there's something, there's something missing. There's something that went wrong. Now, yeah. I have had a f- few friends who... There has been infidelity, and their marriage has actually gotten better. I've heard that too, but so, a lot of times there's something that the woman is also doing that is not fulfilling the man, and typically it's the lack of respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if two people, two imperfect people are having issues and both of them are false, one may be infidelity, one may be something else, and they go and get help and they grow together, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But like for me and in my life, if my husband were to cheat, I would be done. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say this. There's this um, book in the movie. Um, oh, my gosh. What's it called? The one where they're like, you're the exception, not the rule. Or, no, you're the rule, not the exception. Um, oh, Lord, have mercy. It's that breakup movie. There's a book on it. Okay. I don't know. We always do this. I'm sorry, you guys. I will think of it. We will link it in this. <laughs> in this. Um but, oh, he's just not that into you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right, okay. So I read that book when I was, like, in high school and the quarterback, like, dumped me. I read that book, and then there's the movie that came out. So just when there's situations like that, assume that you're the rule, not the exception. Because there are exceptions, like Jenna said, when someone cheats or there's infidelity, and then it makes a relationship better and stronger. Um, that can happen. I would probably assume that you're the rule, not the exception. I think, personally, what it comes down to is... Did I have to find out or did he come and tell me? And how long has it been going on? Like how much lying was going right. on? Was and- it one time? Was there multiple times? Is it the same person? Like I've never been cheated on that I know of. And my husband, he would never, he would never in a million years. Um, but I think that's what it comes down to because I do know couples who he came to her and there was actually a long list of things and they're in our church and he gets up there and he talks about his story and it's intense like there was multiple women there was prostitution and he like came to the lord he told her everything and i mean they're like one of the most amazing couples in our church and they have such a strong solid marriage and they both will talk about the story openly that's the exception not the rule yeah but anyways yeah i tend to agree with that there's a lot of variables yeah. What? I'm just bitter. It's easy to say those stories <laughs> well, when it's not you. Because yeah. if it happened to me, I don't, I, I honestly don't know if I can, I don't know if I could. I think a lot of times, like, after reading so many, like, of these Simply Feminine books and stuff, I'm realizing why men, a lot of men, cheat on people. And it's in those books. It's like, you're not giving, and not that it's, like, necessarily the woman's fault. I'm not saying that. But, like, no. depending on how it happens and if they come to you... Maybe there's a way to work through, like, hey, what wasn't I providing for you that you were seeking out in other places? Mm-hmm. Not that it was right, but I'm more like you. Like, because I try so hard with everything else, I would hope that we would be able to have more conversations about that before it would ever get to that point. And if it ever got to that point, then fuck you because yeah. you didn't have that conversation with me yeah. and I'm done. So I think it's different for everybody. All the circumstances are completely different. Yeah. So Well, mine was high most of the time, so... Totally different. I mean, I have, I know somebody that, I can't believe she stayed with him. Like, I I obviously keep this to myself because it's not my position to, like, tell her my thoughts and feelings. 
on her relationship and we're not that close and like she didn't ask me so I don't give it but um she basically is married to this guy and has kids with him and multiple times she has found is that he has like a whole nother life with this mistress and she has credit cards of his with her name on them and like he's got a house that she lives in and like it's a se- whole separate life and she continues to like allow him to come back to her and I'm just like have some fucking self-respect and move the fuck on. Like it's so hard. You want to hear something really sad? We can cut this, but my ex-husband, I the last person he cheated on me with the last time that, you know, we were together, um, I found out because I heard his voicemail. I don't know if you guys know, but like you can punch in a code and you can hear the voicemails. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. No, so I like I would always do that because I didn't trust him because this is probably the umpteenth person that he's cheated on me with. And I hear, hey, baby, I miss you so much. Um, when are you going to be here? I'm going to be in bed waiting for you. Like, <gasps> oh, yeah. So I, like, confront him about it. And he's like, yeah, I am. Like, totally nonchalantly, like, what are you going to do about it? Like, he already knows I'm not going to leave because he's done this so many times and I never left. I was so fucking desperate to make things work and just so, like you said, like, no respect for myself. Even after the fact, after they weren't together, I freaking bought this chick that was sleeping with my husband even after I had called her and asked her, can you just like, like take a step back for right now? Let me figure out what's going on with him. And if it doesn't work out, he's all yours. And she told me, you just don't know your husband. I've known him since I was 13 years old. Like, fuck you. And you know what I did? Took her to the grocery store and bought her groceries for her and her son because she didn't have any money. (gasps) Jenna! There's a special place for you in heaven. Yeah, honestly. On multiple occasions. Oh, yeah. She still follows me on Facebook. Okay, you're going to have to pull up her profile because I want to see it. Yeah, and then, like, and then like tries to get pity from me about, like, oh, this guy did this to me. I'm like, you fucking slept with my husband. Yeah, that's like, girl code. Like, you don't, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's, is it the guy's fault or, like, is it – what about these women? That don't sleep sleeping? with married men. Even if they say they're working on it or they're not together and then the woman calls you, like – don't be fucking stupid. Oh, yeah. yeah. The ones that don't know that the guy's in a relationship, that's oh, she one knew. thing. But the ones that do, uh... Well, she very much found out. She's like, oh, you don't know yeah, your I'm husband? Yeah, I'm not done with that. She found out real quick. My like, morals don't allow me to be okay with that. And no. if I had a friend that was doing that, I might have to remove that friend from my life. You know what I just watched? Have you guys seen The Other Woman? With Cameron, I, Cameron yes. Diaz and um, Wait, Brooklyn Decker. Yes. We're yes. There's three of them, right? Yeah, there's yes, three of so them. Good. They find out the husband is, like, cheating with Cameron Diaz, and then they oh, become yeah. friends, and then they find out he's, like, cheating with a third someone's person. Phone is ringing. Oh. I was like, oh. someone's phone's ringing. Oh, it's me. I don't even know who this is. Yeah. Um, um, cheating gets me riled up. But yeah. I feel like, I feel like that would be us. Like, I, I oh, love yeah. that movie. I, Let's all get together I, and like, like I totally mess this guy's life Oh up. yeah, I wouldn't confront him. I would just F up his entire world <laughs> yeah. if you ever did that to me. Well, see, mine has been homeless since I left him, so I didn't even have to do a damn thing. He's... Payback. Yeah. Sorry, I don't feel bad. There you yeah, go. Yeah, he, he, it sounds like he had it coming. It sounds yeah. like he did a lot I know of my friend, things. one of my friends was like, so what is he doing when it rains? I'm like, I don't know, put the trash can to the lid down. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh. Okay, we've been talking forever, um, and I feel like this one veered off a little bit, but you know what? That's just uh, it's our style. It's just our style. Yeah. yeah. So I hope you guys know that like we literally don't even have really any notes, and we had no idea that the conversation was gonna go here. We just kind of we just we literally start talking, and girl talk go. happens. <laughs> just let it go. Just let it go. Um, but thanks for listening, you guys, or watching whatever it is, and we will see you in the next podcast. Yeah, no, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye.